wanted to take a look this morning at the feast of the Lord. In Leviticus chapter 23, the Bible says, These are the feasts of the Lord. And throughout this chapter, every feast that the Jewish people would celebrate was listed here. First off, I want you to know that that word feasts comes from the word moed in the Hebrew. That word is first found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 where it talks about how God made the sun and the moon and the stars for signs and for seasons. The signs is the Maseroth, which is talked about in Job chapter 38, which contains the 12 signs and 36 constellations along with those 12 signs. But then for seasons is that word moed, which means an appointed time, a set time. So it's like God's calendar. God had gave the Jewish people a calendar to go by. The first feast that the Jews were to celebrate was the Lord's Passover, the 14th day of the first month. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul writes that Jesus, our Passover, is crucified for us. Jesus died on that specific day. He had to die on that specific day to fulfill the feast of Passover. He could not have died just any day of the week. He had to die, be buried, be three days in the grave, and rise from the dead on the first day of the week, which the, Jew, the Jewish day begins at sundown. So sometime when the sun went down Saturday night, Sometime till the sun came up the next morning, Jesus arose from the dead. And he fulfilled the feast of Passover with his death at that specific time. I want you to look in uh, the book of John so you can see this. The book of John, Jesus said over and over about his time was not yet, which is interesting. Here, notice here that now the Jews sought to kill Jesus, and it was the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. And Jesus is told to go up to the feast. Notice what Jesus says here in verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Well, what do you mean by that? He meant that he was not at this time it wasn't his time to die, but our time could happen at any moment. We could die at any time, but Jesus' death had to be fulfilled at a specific time. Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration talked to Jesus about his decease, which he would accomplish at Jerusalem. It was a set time. Notice, as we look on here, verse 8 says, Go ye up to the feast. I go not up yet onto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. So it wasn't his time to die yet. If you read on here, verse 30 says, Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And as we continue looking through the book of John, verse 20 says, These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. And as you progress on through the book of John, you'll reach a point where Jesus states, look here in verse 23 of John chapter 12, Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Chapter 13, Now before the feast of Passover... That's when Jesus had to die during the feast of Passover. When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world, the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So Jesus knew that his hour was come. He knew he had to die on the Passover. That's the Lord's appointed time. No other time could Jesus have died but at the Passover. And over in the book of Galatians, this pops into my mind now, the book of Galatians talks about Jesus and how he came in the fullness of time. Let me go too 
far here. Galatians chapter 4 says this. Notice about how we're under tutors and, and governors until the time appointed of, his, of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Now notice this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So Jesus came in the fullness of time, at the set time, at the exact time he was to come. You have, then after the, the feast of Passover, you have the feast of unleavened bread, which Jesus lived a perfect sinless life, never one time sinned. And we too now, we're to, to put away sin. The Apostle Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians as well, that Feast of Unleavened Bread, that was for seven days, and that included, the started at the Feast of Passover. And then we have the Feast of First Fruits. Notice verse 10, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Well, when's the Sabbath day? Well, it's Saturday. What's well, the day after the Sabbath? Sunday. What day did Jesus resurrect from the dead? Sunday, first day of the week. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. We'll look over there quick. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 23 says this. But every man in his own order, talking about the resurrection. Christ the first fruits, after they that are Christ at his coming. So Jesus is the first fruits of those that rose from the dead. Look at verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So on the appointed day, that appointed time, Jesus rose from the dead. Could he have risen from the dead any other day? No. Could he have died on the cross? any other day but the Passover. No, he had to die that specific day, that specific time. Let me go back to the feast again, back in Leviticus chapter number 23. We see the next one, which most Christians understand this, that the church was established on the day of Pentecost. Verse 15 says, Ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, so from the time of the resurrection, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall ye complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Notice leaven. Leaven's a picture of sin. And two loaves baked with leaven. So, as you see in my center reference there, two loaves with leaven picture the Jew and the Gentile that make up the church. We're sinners saved by the grace of God. We have sin in us. We will not have that sin nature taken out of us until the rapture, until this corruptible puts on incorruption, the incorruptible, and will be changed. Now we get down to the Feast of Trumpets, down in verse 23, we see about the Feast of Trumpets, and then we want well, to start reading verse 23, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall be a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. This day, that is talked about here, this is what's Looking forward to what Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians. Back in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Again, this is the feast day. 
Paul says, I'm going to show you a mystery. So far, four festivals have had a fulfillment in them. Jesus died in the Passover. He was sinless. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. We have then the Feast of First Fruits, the resurrection, which took place on that Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. It had to take place at that exact time. We had the exact timing of the uh, church starting in Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. There has to be that fulfillment in the exact timing as God laid out. And here we see God's calendar, God's festivals, His appointed times. This is when the rapture is going to take place at the Feast of Trumpets. Someday, on that specific day, as the Feast of Trumpets comes to an end, when they blow that trumpet for the 100th time to end the Feast of Trumpets, the rapture will take place. Some year, no one's sure what year it's going to be. But I'll tell you what, it sure looks good for this year. You know, and God, I believe, is working on a, on a 7,000-year calendar. When 6,000 years are fulfilled, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to set up His kingdom. So I'll make another video and explain that to you. But here we have these festivals. There's three yet to be fulfilled, Feast of Trumpets. Then we have the Day of Atonement when Christ comes back and all Israel is saved. And the Feast of Tabernacles to follow when Jesus will rule and reign from Jerusalem for 1,000 years. So I'll make another video about that in the future. God bless. I hope you're saved. If you're not saved, you better seek the Lord while it's still day. Don't harden your heart. Turn to the Lord and He'll be merciful.